Shalom. Call hello and held by Shem Abishai, by Shem Bakarkwadash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth, that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Akwath that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago, coming into another lesson in truth. And this is a scene from the movie Goodbye Uncle Tom, which came out in 1971. And uh, I was using it as a backdrop on a video. And as I was looking away and reading, not paying attention, right around this time, this in the movie, this is about an hour in. Um, well, there's been a lot of nudity throughout the movie, but this show, but this nudity showed you the so-called white man having his way with Negro slave women and then with the content of the video, um, Esau got butt hurt and, and removed the video. All right. They removed it. So it was a violation of, uh, nudity, sex and nudity. Although it didn't show you any sex at all. It did show you some nudity, but here's the thing. The video is still on YouTube. So why is it that this movie is allowed to be on YouTube and I do a commentary to a video that's on YouTube, but yet my video is removed for sex and nudity. You see how hypocritical it is? Then I could, you know, Esau is a piece of shit. So, you know, death, destruction, and curses to anyone who was at work that pushed the button, that wouldn't got a supervisor or had anything to do with the removal of this video. May sick famine, sickness, famine, and, and destruction come upon you and your household this day all right may you lose your health your wealth and, and your and your uh and your security all right and when it happens uh that you recall you know i, I i've gotten word of the counseling that you that you edomites who view these videos have to do and um believe me all this is going to come back on you double call hello you how about shim how shy all right so uh but yeah, we're just going to go into it again. I was reading from the book, How the Word is Passed, by Clint Smith. And it's a, a reckoning with the history of slavery in America. And that's what it is. Esau does not want to deal with his history, his past, and how he became rich, and how he became powerful, and how he got to the positions that he's in in the world today. He does not want to acknowledge it. And it's written in the Bible that he would do so. All right. That he is indeed, that they are indeed the Edomites. Okay. Um, so the first scripture I'm going to read is Sirach. Forty one and seven. All right. And it reads. The children will complain of an ungodly father because they shall be a reproach for his sake. So these Edomites walking around today, all right, the kids, the little kids in school, in college, in high school, they're a reproach for what their forefathers did. Why? Because this is the information age. All right. So all the wickedness and the, and the dirty deals and the breaking of contracts. And all the things that they did to ensure they rigged the game of life in their benefit. And now all those things are coming to the forefront. Slakia. And they just simply do not like it. Esau doesn't like being exposed. He wants his dirt to stay hidden in the shadows. Okay. That's what he wants. He wants his, his dirt to stay hidden. He doesn't want it to come um, to be made manifest. All right, so I'm going to pick up on a, on page 12 where uh, where the this, the writer is on um, on a tour of of uh, a Monticello, all right, which was a slave plantation of, of your former president Thomas Jefferson, all right, who who had a famous quote, and that quote was a uh, I, I fear for the future of my nation, basically for what they've done, roughly paraphrased. All right. 
But this is uh, and he and you should. You Edomites today should be very, very fearful because all this lies with these uh, man-made uh, uh, disasters, these 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 man-made uh, epidemics and things like that, uh, which clearly <laughs> uh, have a, a, a function that they didn't have before, but they're called not gain a function when they've been given. A function, you know, when they admit in speech that it it it's now has a new function, but yet that's not. But anyway, we you know we're not gonna deal with to start saying names and stuff because uh, I don't want them to take this video down again. All right, this is a uh, Sirach forty one and seven, and it reads, uh, I read that Salakia. I'm starting at page two, I'm uh paragraph two on page twelve, and it says Jefferson also gave presents to his kids and grandkids. He said, and this was David, a moment of respite for those who within just a few minutes had begun to see their prior conceptions of Jeff Jefferson evaporate away. I felt disappointed, wanting David to continue exposing the parts of Jefferson's legacy that are so frequently remained buried. buried. This was the purpose of the tour, I thought, to excavate unsavory stories and wrestle with them. And outwardly, honestly, with without pause. But as soon as that thought came, David began the second half of his statement. Those presents were human beings among the enslaved community, like the one on the screen, who was just a moment before this washing his feet. Oh, and there's another girl in there, too. Right. And, and you know, because this is the big house, they had a lot of guests. So they sent a bunch of young, round butt, full-breasted uh, Negro women, both dark chocolate and light chocolate, to uh, to to be you know to to heed the 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 sexual beckoning of these uh, uh, small Edomite men, which one of the girls even says so. How you know, oh master, I don't like black men. They too large and they smell. White man small. And he smelled good and he's better for the first time. That's what she said. All right. This is right around the hour. Uh, moment. Like I said, this is an hour and 39 seconds. This scene into the two hour and three minute movie. All right. Which shows you vengeance at the end, which is biblical. All right. And it also showing you that that vengeance is going to come modern day for what they did in the past. Because they are, they are their forefathers. But this is the... Uh, Deuteronomy how fitting Deuteronomy the 28th chapter alright um, and the 32nd uh, 30 through 30, 32 I'm going to read so this is oh, 30 through 32 and it reads thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell therein. You think now this is not his wife. And that house that he's living in, he didn't build it. Slaves built it. Men. All the while, while he was having their way with his women and his own. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and thou shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Those, these slaves work day in and day out, you know, their whole lives to their deaths, all right? And uh, never reaped the benefit of any of the labor that they did. Slave labor built up America. Your banking institutions, your insurance companies, most of your Fortune 500 corporations can be traced back to slave labor, right? The stock market itself, the first stocks on the slave is the big breasted young chocolate woman there being fondled by this little red piece of shit? Let's continue. David knew what he was doing. The pedagogical, gogical equivalent of a crossover in basketball, lulling his opponents into one direction inducing them into a momentary assurance 
that they know in which direction they are moving before promptly switching hands right underneath their own outstretched arms, leaving them frozen in place as you drive to the, to the basket. He broke their damn ankles with the truth. <laughs> the tour guide did. He made them feel like, all right, I'm going to now shine a, a, a bright light of, of, on the good nature of your, your former president. And it was like, psych, this dude was a piece of shit. All right? And I can only imagine the redness in the cheeks and the embarrassment of the white people that were on so-called, self-proclaimed white people on this tour because they indeed are the red Edomites of the Bible. And they hate that so much. And we don't care. Because nigga and savage and spick and beaner, you know, those aren't like favorable names, you know? So fuck your feelings. David continued to refer to the black enslaved people who are really brown, living on Monticello as human beings. The decision to use human as a primary descriptor rather than slave was a small yet intentional move. He described the games the children played on warm Sunday afternoons, the only day of the week they did not have to work, the songs and enslaved workers sang late into the evenings, the celebration they took part of and when someone was married were reverberating throughout the was the humanity of the enslaved people. Their unceasing desire to live a full life that would not be defined simply by their labor. Hmm. It says, David and every other tour guide on the plantation had to convey this sense of priesthood with limited access to stories enslaved themselves. Historian Lucia Stanton, who worked as a historian at, as historian at Monticello for over three decades, had wrestled with this. To reconstruct the world of Monticello's African-Americans, see that, and see, this is where people like Clint Smith you know, needs to go back and, and re-educate himself. The Negroes were neither African nor American. They were Hebrew Israelites from the land of Israel that were um, that were were refugees in the land of Africa on the west coast of Africa. Hence the reason why they were sold. All right. They were they are not African and they are not American. Neither one. All right. Africans were the enemies of these people. That's how they ended up in slavery. That very important fact is still being left out in some cases. Only six images of men and women who lived there in slavery are known. Their own words are preserved in just four reminiscences in a handful of letters she wrote with the direct testimony of most African-American residents of Monticello. We must try to hear their voices in the sparse records of Jefferson's foreign book and often based accounts on, on letters dealing with labor management through the inherited memories of those who left Monticello for lives of freedom. Even with limited resources, David brought these stories to life. He finished his preamble to the tour. You know, if you take it all together, those documents, uh, like Jefferson's farm book, the memories from people who, Monte, who call Monticello home, and then the archaeology, the stories does begin to unfold. Despite the horror and oppressions of slavery, those families who once lived here, what are they doing? They're trying to carve out some kind of normal life. They are passing on tradition, and the traditions they're passing on is post-traumatic slave disorder. Hence the reason why the, 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 the young girl on the scene after this that I can't show because she strips down. Like I said, I was reading and looking away. I didn't even see all that, you know, as I was doing a video. All right. Um, the mindset that she had, how she hated her own men. All right. And loved her, her oppressor. All right. Yeah. Yeah. They have, they have a post-traumatic stress disorder, which has been passed on generation to generation, <clears throat> which received no help whatsoever for it. All right, just pull yourself up by the bootstraps. 
basically, in your, your post-traumatic stress self. Despite the